Did you know there are four ways you can add visual editing to a headless CMS? There are simple ones that can work with your code exactly as it is right now today. There are even ones that can make your code simpler and just embrace the components in your code base. There are ones that give you edit buttons, so anything you see on your site, you can just open up in your CMS and start editing. And there's ways you can just drag and drop with the components already in your code base so that you can just build components and then people can edit the props to build out whatever they want, which can mean a lot less engineering tickets, at least for making simple content updates, because that's kind of a waste of time anyway. These are the four approaches available to you today. The first two use structured data. So similar to how you probably use a headless CMS today, but with easier ways to find and preview content in real time. And the second two that simplify your code by giving you a drag and drop interface with your components from your code base that people can put in place, change their props, and publish autonomously without needing engineering tickets to make more significant changes to pages. Let's first talk about visual edit buttons. So here I've got some typical code where I make an API call to a headless CMS, and then I build out my page, passing in the CMS data to various props, constructing the layout and format of the page myself. This is a simple example. These are usually larger and more complex, but you get the idea. Vercel recently announced a feature where with no updates to your code, in the Vercel preview mode, you can actually see what fields are editable and jump in to edit those fields. The way you do that is first use a CMS that supports this. Today, I know Builder.io and Sanity are two. Then you might need to add one simple option. In this case, we just need to specify when we're in this preview environment. Now the headless CMS will add metadata to the API responses that will actually invisibly be passed to the React component and into the DOM, which gives you these cool overlays that allow you to open up anything you see in your CMS. The thing this doesn't do though, is help me understand how edits to the content will render onto my page. That's where you'll want the second type of visual editing, a visual live preview. With a visual live preview, I can make changes and see those changes update my page in real time. That can help tell me if I've added too much text than makes sense either on desktop or when previewing on other devices. Or to have a more clear sense of what is a header versus a title and clearly see what I should put where. This way there's no surprises. I can see if the image I'm uploading actually is legible on top of the text, which in this case, it's clearly not. And I can even manage whole sections of the page using structured data. And I can easily see what I'm doing as I make my edits. Similar to preview buttons, very little code is needed. In the case of Builder, we just need a wrapper component. And now when open in the visual editor, these data values will update in real time, showing me a live preview as I go. And this method works great until you start getting tickets to change things like the layout of the page, buttons, colors, and other things that are simple, yet not hard coded into this layout and schema. That's where the fourth type of visual editing can be really useful. It's called visual component composition, and it allows you to take the components already in your code base, but give those to content editors and allow them to drag and drop to place them and customize them as you like. So this is where if I need to change this page layout, I can just drag and change it. These are still my React components, but there's a visual interface to change whatever props that I allow to be changed. Using roles and permissions, we can decide who has access to edit which components and how. And now we don't need to manage complicated schemas for edits to the page and it's are more natural and intuitive to content editors. But more important, your code can go from all this hard-coded nonsense to just this, where we dynamically render the content of this page or a section of a page based on registering the components already in your code base. So now my hero component, which I'm allowing these two props to be editable and specifying how, can be dragged and dropped into any area I allow by any user I've enabled with roles and permissions. This allows us to use components like they were meant to be as reusable building blocks, not just for me, but for the content editors. So I don't have to have tickets and deploy code when people want to rearrange, move, or tweak things that already exist in the design system and are available with props already. We're just now making all of those props visual and editable. And I decide where and how that works. Which leads us to the last type of visual editing, which is full no code editing. This is useful for situations you encounter where you have a simple need, but there's no component already in your code base that solves the need. For example, if I have this hero and I want it at the top of my page, but I also want it to have a button inside. Unfortunately, that's not how this hero is built, but that doesn't mean that's not gonna be something people need at some point. Typically, that would require an engineering ticket, a sprint, a deployment, but we're just talking about a button here. With no code editing, 
I can actually augment what's already here. And I can allow certain team members to have a Figma-like interface to edit this and create something exactly as needed. I can use the components already in my code base. For example, this button that I want to have aligned over here. And now I've just created a new hero. And now I've just created a new hero. It gives me a button like I need. I gave it a dark mode like I wanted. And now I can publish this without a code deployment. I can make it so that only our design team can make these edits and require approval from various team members. And when requirements change and we want this hero to be larger and have a cool background image, that can be done in just a couple clicks. And again, we're live with no engineering tickets needed at all. This is particularly useful when you need to do things like run A-B tests or personalize content to different audiences. You likely don't want to be building all this stuff from scratch and instead allow a visual editor combined with roles and permissions to manage this for you. And finally, it's worth mentioning that these are not either or options. In fact, each one of these approaches builds on the last. So if you use component composition or no code editing, you could still combine that with structured data and live previews. For example, when I edit the builder.io blog, I use structured data and a live preview for the blog title, but drag and drop editing for the contents of the blog post. These are both in one entry. So when I publish, it's not only publishing my fields and my drag and drop content, any other metadata I take in as structured data like the blog author, which is a reference to another structured data fields, tags, topics, and all that good stuff you expect in a headless CMS. This was just a really quick look at visual editing techniques with a headless CMS. You can learn a lot more about this topic, including what use cases are best for which approach in my latest blog post on the builder.io blog.